Morning folks, Guy DeMarco here with once again the delicious Foundations AG Cup. Drinking some Black Rifle Coffee Company. I like their Chinook, it's nice and black. <clears throat> All right, so previously I brought you working on my CZ, or excuse me, my Savage. Now I'm working on my CZ. All right. This is a CZ 455. All right, I've got a Vortex Diamondback Tactical 6 to 24 by 50 on top. All right, uh, bought this off a buddy of mine, and then I had another buddy of mine um, do something really nice and got a hold of Craig Kierstead over at PDC Customs and uh, got me a chassis for this thing. So. Now I'm going to be dropping it in this guy. Um, this thing is awesome. It's uh, it's pretty lightweight, um, all billet, super nice, clean lines. Uh, it's the Gen 5C. It's got the barricade stop, barricade stop built into the front. Uh, it's got Arca all the way along the front, both sections here, um, and then it's got an Anschwitz rail in the front so I can take this off, slide it out, and then slide it wherever I need my bipod to be. So pretty cool, fully adjustable for length of pull and for cheek rise, right? It's got some spacers and then you just slide them in and out. Same here. Um, Gonna get this thing adjusted up. It's also got a thumb stop. So you can position that. So once you get the rifle where you want, you have a place to put your thumb. Uh, so I'm gonna get this thing mounted up, but I couldn't just stop there. Cause what's the fun of just dropping the same old thing and the same old thing. So we are safe and clear. I, I was just testing the I was just testing trigger pull. If you can see, I'm getting a little bit of bang up from the uh, from the increased bolt handle that I've got here that the previous owner put on there. I think I'm the third owner on this guy. Um, so that new bolt handle is uh, is banging up my banging things up. So I figured, mm, let's try putting a bigger base on there. So went ahead and ordered ordered a area 419 30 MOA rail instead of the, uh, I think it's a 15 that's on there now. I ordered the YoDave trigger kit. I ordered the MK machining throw lever, throw lever for the scope that I'm putting on there. And because this is gonna be an open gun for the NRL 22, I am uh, I'm breaking down and putting my Razor HD2 on there because <laughs> I really want to beat uh, beat a couple of the guys that have been out there the last couple times. So this was uh, saved for my center fire build that I'm uh, slowly working on because. Uh, uh, as you guys know, I do everything in cash. So if I don't have the cash, I don't do it. So I've been saving up for quite a while um, for the actual build portion, getting the uh, action and the barrel made it up, turned up, get all that taken care of. And then also uh, getting my stock purchased, which that is in the process of happening. So that's super dope. Um, shout out to uh, Robert Bramley over at uh, Manners for taking care of me on that one. Super cool. Uh, but let's jump into this thing. So first thing we're gonna do is pop this thing out of the stock and, and get ready to go. So let's do that now. I'd actually like to take the scope off, seeing as how we're not gonna be using this scope anymore. This scope is actually gonna get transferred over to another one of my firearms. Uh, I'm gonna probably put it on my Ruger 1020 1022 and use it as a club gun for a little while. 
along with the uh, along with my uh, my 1022 this scope and the Savage for the month of January. So if anybody needs a and that's really in there. If anybody needs a firearm for NRL 22 for the month of January at the Altus NRL 22 series, hit me up. We'll get you taken care of. Cool. All right, we're gonna put the scope somewhere nice and safe so it doesn't get all banged up or anything like that because it's still a solid scope. Boom, there we go, just slid right off there. I'll probably put that on the NRL 22 gear swap page or something like that. Seeing so, I will no longer be needing it. Okay. Chamber flag head has fallen out. Boom, and there we go. So now we have one barreled action. Shazam. A little on the dirty side, I'm gonna clean that up. But also, now it's gonna be time to replace this trigger return spring. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, wipe this down, and then get into that. Exciting stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and come back to you guys when I've read the destructions on the Yoda. Okay, so I've read the destructions. I like it and I don't like it because they're vague. <laughs> but we're going to get it done. So to do this, I'm going to remove the front pin and the rear pin of the trigger. And then I'm going to replace it with one of these colored shims and a new roll pin for the front and that'll take care of the front shim and then I will choose a spring for the rear of the firearm and do that as well. So I'm going to time lapse this because I'm going to do some testing and whatnot and make sure that everything works right. So we're going to pause this real quick, switch over to time lapse and then we'll just time lapse the whole thing. All right, guys, that took a little longer than I wanted it to. <clears throat> Had to figure out which, uh, which spacer, these little guys, was going to work best in this to, to make sure that I still had a safe and functional firearm. Now I'm going to uh, use my trigger gauge and 
find out a spring that works. So it's kind of the same process, but a little, little different. I'll do a set of five for you guys. A set of five, uh, five pulls, and then I'll pause the video and come back when I have um, something good. What I was getting before I started this test was right around a pound, so 16 to, uh, to 19 ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it to it. and see what we come up with. Seven point two. It's pretty light. And that's ounces. Six point seven. Five point one five point seven I am the waffle man, the waffle man. My father in law's in here, guys, don't worry. And 8.6. Okay, now that the Waffle Man is gone, that last pull was, uh, we're going to redo that last pull because I, I smudged it a little bit. 7.1. Okay, so we probably have an average of about 6.5 right there. I don't feel comfortable with a 6.5 uh, ounce trigger on this, especially going between barricades and whatnot. So I'm actually gonna take this spring out and replace it with a heavier spring that is provided uh, and see what we come up with. <laughs> okay guys, uh, I had the Waffle Man come back out and give me a hand because getting that last, uh, that pin in the rear the uh, pivot pin was a little difficult. <clears throat> so now we got a safe and reliable trigger. <clears throat> so that aspect is done. Um, <clears throat> the first spring that I put in there got it down to uh, I had a seven, two, a six, seven, a five, one, a five, seven, and a seven. So we're looking at like a five and three quarter ounce, five and some change, six, maybe a six ounce trigger. I'm not comfortable with that. So I upped it and now I'm sitting right around an 11 ounce trigger, which I'm okay with. So now we're gonna drop this guy into this PDC Customs PDC Customs chassis. All right, now I did bring an Atlas bipod out here so that I actually have something to mount this thing on so I can keep it nice and steady. Shazam. So I'll be running my Atlas bipod. All right, so Boy, am I glad I'm running suppressed. <laughs> uh, let's turn this down for you guys. Okay, so. With the action sitting where it needs to sit. Just a tiny bit shy, but that's all right. I'm not worried about it. I just won't put my hand that far forward for right now.
So I'm going to get a short action screw up here in the front. Oh, I probably should have checked out what size Allens these were first. Let's go ahead and set that down. Let that thing fall out. Helps if I'm not using the metric side like a dumbass. Are these metric? Is this a 5.5? Five five? They are metric! Now my only question is, how in the heck am I going to torque this thing? I should probably look up what the actual torque spec is as well. Because I don't know what it is. But there she is. Dropped in a chassis. I do need to adjust the length of pull on this because as you can tell, that is really long. So we'll get all that adjusted as well. All right, hang with me guys. All right guys, so I'm back, I got it torqued up. <clears throat> so, fun fact, if you take a DeWalt, uh, extender whatever slides up to take this uh to keep your screw in for the magnetic part right i popped this outer shield off and that fits perfectly inside of this hole down here for your rear action screw so i'll be buying another one here shortly and uh and keeping it with my kit of tools in case I need to take a barreled action or take the action out of the barrel for some reason. Tried this one uh, that came with my assortment of bits and whatnot, but it did not work. Um, so adapt and overcome. So this is what she looks like in the barreled action. As you can see, we're about three quarters of an inch to a half an inch short on the, uh, the muzzle end. That's okay. I'll be shooting this firearm suppressed anyways. So let's go ahead and mount the scope rail from area 419. All right, we uh, was waiting for this thing to go on sale. It finally did. So I took advantage of the Christmas and holiday bonanzas and got her taken care of. All right, do, 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 do. This product, chemicals, lead, blah, 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 California, Prop 65. All right. No pertinent information on the side. So we're just going to loosen this up. Slide her on. And then don't see anything about a torque setting, so I'm probably just going to snug her down and call her good. No reason to go overboard on the the tightness of said scope rail there's nothing on the top so it doesn't look like it's going to need to be done up any certain kind of way
picked Area 419 because they do have the integrated bubble level in the back. Um, as a quick reference, I'll probably still end up putting a different bubble level, uh, an additional bubble level on here. Um, I mean, it's a 22, guys, so why not have fun with it? Um, but I picked Area 419 um, because I like them. So uh, I've got uh, Ingenuity Gunworks. Uh, EGW um, rails on other firearms and they work great but they didn't provide um, I know you can call them and get them specially cut for different MOA offsets but um, I just went ahead and ordered this one from 419 uh, just so I would have it in a timely manner. I've actually been wanting to build this gun for a while, but all of you guys know with uh, family illness, everything else like that, kind of has prevented me from doing so. So there we go. Area 419 in the house. Everything is gravy. Everything is awesome. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust... <clears throat> Uh, actually, I'm not going to adjust my length of pull. What I am going to do is mount the old scope dope on top because that's what I need to do now. Okay, guys, here she is. Got the uh, <clears throat> got the scope mounted on her uh, with the sun shield. Makes this thing look uh, look nasty. I think the scope weighs just as much as the rifle does. This is in a American Defense uh, clamp. It's got the cantilever. I'll probably replace that when I go to put this scope on something different. This is just for the January match. This is the four and a half to 27 power scope, which, um, yeah, wow, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of scope for a 22. But um, when I go out there this weekend or in January and beat the brakes off people, it's gonna be with uh, with a high quality firearm for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down behind it, get my length of pull and my cheek riser adjustment all set up, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll do one final review of everything that uh, that I've done. Hmm. Not that I forgot, but kind of. I'm also going to throw the MK Machine throw lever on here because it doesn't have a throw lever at the, at the moment. Um, I got a bunch of stuff from MK Machining. Um, I've got uh, I got a bubble level from them. Uh, a 3D printed bubble level, which is pretty awesome. That's all my, my Savage. Um, I've got uh, another one of their, their throw levers um, on... Uh, on that firearm as well. So these are 3D printed, right? And they just go on where your uh, where your stuff normally goes, where a throw lever would normally go, but it's 3D printed. This one has the uh, some carbon fiber built into it. It's super tough. It's not going anywhere. Um, super dope. I really like them. I really, uh, I really think they're good stuff. And for 20 bucks, it's not 50 or 60 that you're normally spending. Um, on an aluminum one, granted, 3D printing may not last as long. Um, however, comma, it gets the job done for me, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, guys, stay with me. I'm going to get everything figured out, and then we're going to do a final. All right, folks, we are all done with the CZ455 PDC Customs Vortex Yo Dave Area 419 build. That's a mouthful. Once again, delicious coffee. All right, so here we got it. All right. That's the bipod. I need to throw an additional rotation on the, uh, on that set screw. But CZ455 came out of the Pro Varmint stock Dropped it into a PDC Customs, Sniper Gray, I believe, or Tungsten, one of the colors. 
All right, dropped a Yo Dave trigger kit in it, got it down to about 11 ounces. Uh, adjusted the length of pull and the cheek riser height for the Vortex Optics Razor Gen 2 4 to 27 EVR C2 reticle. Got the Atlas bipod on the front. Uh, eventually, I would like to find a straight trigger for this. Um, as you can see, it's got the stock curve. I'm a fan of straight triggers. I might just buy an additional 455 trigger and then bend it up myself to get it to uh, function the way I want it to function. But um, yeah, super happy with this uh, with this build. Hopefully I'll be able to get it out to the range um, in the next week or so with the, uh, with the holiday break and Christmas and everything else like that. At least get it out to the range, get it zeroed, do some, uh, some I say load development, but test some ammo, see what's going to run with it. Um, see how, uh, see how everything's going to fit and, and jive together. Super looking forward to it. Um, she's going to be a shooter. Hopefully I can take down its previous owner and its previous, previous owner with this bad Johnny. Um, yeah, super looking forward to it. Um, should be a really good build. Really, uh, really interesting. Uh, just want to say thank you to uh, to Rudy for giving Craig a call and for Craig Kirsted over at PDC Customs for uh, thinking that I was worthy of a a donated chassis. I will throw this on the scale and see what she ends up uh, what she ends up weighing. But super appreciate um, all the folks that helped us come together between between Rudy between between Craig between uh, the buddy that traded me two firearms for my dream Vortex, to all the people that have supported me throughout the, uh, throughout the shooting community, um, my trainers, uh, Max Ordnant, Ray and Tyler, and Paul, uh, thank you guys for, uh, for getting me into, uh, into Precision Rifle. Eric C uh, Severson out of California, thanks for let me show up to your guys' club that one time, that two, two, three, or t two or three times. Let me shoot with you guys and get me into this. Thanks to the NRL 22 for putting out great courses of fire every month and, and building a home and a community of shooters around something that is relatively less expensive than center fire, even though we all know that this, this gets kind of pricey pretty quickly. Um, yeah, just want to say thank you guys. Um, Thank you to, uh, to PhoneScope for letting me be an ambassador of their product. Thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to continue with you guys out into the 2020 season. Definitely some cool stuff to come, so stay with that. Um, yeah, I took the scope covers off this. That way I can, or the, the lens covers, that way I can sit here and, uh, and play with it and uh, throw my PhoneScope on it and, and get some get some cool footage for you guys. So I'm sorry this is such a long video. It's probably running into the 20 to 30 minute mark now. So I'm going to get off there. But thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Tyler Ray. Paul, thank you, uh, dude that I traded some optics for or some firearms for some optics. Thank you, uh, NRL 22 crew. Thank you, Altus, uh, Mike, uh, Anissa, Spencer, um, John, uh, Josh, all you guys for letting me, uh, let me host matches, putting up with me, all my crazy questions and phone calls and emails. Um, thank you everybody. Appreciate it. Um, get a full range report on this guy here shortly. Once I throw my suppressor on it, get out to the range. So take care guys. Uh, hopefully I'll get this posted by Christmas. So Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever you believe in, uh, do your thing, right? All right. Happy holidays.